Hey guys, thanks for checking out the Film Geek. Today I'm talking about the 1984 film, Streets of Fire. I need the job. I'm plenty good enough and I ain't gonna let you down. Listen, Skirt, let me make it simple for you. Take a hike. All right, I'll cut you in for 10%, but get this. You're working for me. I tell you to do something, you do it. You don't do more, you don't do less. And if you start dragging your ass, I'm sending you home. You got it. Hey, what is this? Get serious. I'm not paying you any extra to take some sweetie pie along for company. Streets of Fire is directed by Walter Hill and is starring Michael Pere, Rick Moranis, Diane Lane, and Willem Dafoe. So Streets of Fire is a rock opera, action film, sci-fi mashup? So the story is pretty simple. A soldier for hire returns to his neighborhood to try to save his ex-girlfriend who gets kidnapped by a biker gang. And then there's music and stuff. Streets of Fire actually owes its existence to the movie 48 Hours, starring Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy. That movie was also directed by Walter Hill, and because that movie was such a big success, the studio didn't mind giving Walter Hill the $14.5 million it took to make Streets of Fire. And in 1984, that's a lot of cash. The movie was released June 1st, 1984, and it completely bombed. With its $14.5 million budget, the movie only made $8 million at the box office. Now, this might have been because of another little movie that came out at that same weekend, Star Trek III The Search for Spock. After being released on VHS, Streets of Fire took on more of a cult following. Now, one person did walk away from this movie making a little bit of cash, and that's the musician Don Hartman. You see, Don Hartman wrote the song I Can Dream About You, which is featured at the end of the movie Streets of Fire. And actually, this song was <laughs> more successful than the movie that gave birth to it. I Can Dream About You actually landed at number six on the Billboard Top 100 that same year. And Streets of Fire, the film, was one of the lowest grossing films of the year. So what do I like about this movie? Well, first off, the film looks timeless. Now, this is what I mean by that. The movie is stuck in its own alternate universe, it seems. You see, it's not necessarily taking place in the 80s when the movie was filmed. It kind of has like this 1950s vibe to it. I mean, Willem Dafoe, who plays the villain of the movie, looks like uh, one of the lost members of the Misfits, for God's sakes. Now, but then, all the cars look like something that came out of the 1930s or 1950s or something. They're all custom made. They're not real cars that ever existed. It just, it just gives this movie a very awesome vibe, like you don't know where it exists in the known universe. Now the way the music is presented in this film is really good. Now this isn't like a typical, you know, musical where people are dancing in the street. There's a little bit of dancing in the street, but it's not like a musical number or anything like that. It's like a dance scene. But any, anyways, I digress. So the movie itself doesn't have like any big choreographed scenes. All the music takes place on stage because the story is about a musician who's kidnapped kidnapped by bikers and this guy's going after him. So there's a lot of stuff about the music industry, the the good side, the bad side, the dark seedy side, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, the movie itself just plays out like a really long music video. The most standout performance I have to say in this film though comes from Willem Dafoe as our villain. He is great. He has this complete comic book kind of villain aspect about him and his he's just completely over the top I love his look in this movie like I said he looks like a lost member of the misfits uh, Willem Dafoe just sells his performance like none other now the movie itself is kind of tongue-in-cheek which means the performance that he delivers is a little off the wall yeah but it, it works great for this movie so if you're a Willem Dafoe fan you've never seen Streets of Fire you got to check this out. This is one of his earlier films. If you're interested in watching Streets of Fire, you can currently find it for rent on YouTube, Google, and Vudu. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of another Film Geek video. Thanks again for checking things out. If you liked what you saw here today, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and ring that bell for notifications. And if there's one thing that you can do, folks, is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna.